Hey folks, welcome back to Just a Guy. Uh, and today I'm gonna to be talking about developing film. So over the last month, I have been really looking into developing my own film at home. And it is something that I have been thinking about for quite a while. Since I've been shooting film for about four years, I've been doing what everyone usually does is they will find a local lab and they'll just drop all the film off there. And for a while, that wasn't really an issue. You know, the film four years ago, it was going up, but it wasn't that expensive. But now it's, the film's expensive now. <laughs> I don't think any of y'all are gonna know what this is. A roll of uh, Ektachrome is 20 bucks for a roll. That's insane. So over the last month, I'm really looking deep into how to develop film at home. And I wasn't really quite sure where to start, but I have this buddy of mine, Nate Mitchell. He's an amazing photographer. I'll have his Instagram linked below if you wanna check him out. Uh, but he has been doing film, you know, I actually don't know how long he's been doing film, but he has definitely picked it up a lot faster than I have. I have just stayed at 35 millimeter because I just enjoy the portability of it. The only medium format camera I have is actually this Spartus that my wife picked up at a uh, an antique shop. It's it's functional. I could I can use this. I'm thinking about buying a roll of black and white and uh, trying it out. But anyways, so I reached out to him and he sent me a plethora of different YouTubers to watch, and just about all of them had a video about how to develop film at home whether it's mostly color, but some had black and white and how to scan it at home. And between the two, I decided to go with scanning. I think most film photographers would say they would rather scan their own film than develop their own film. Unless you like trust a specific lab with that scan, you never know what you're gonna get. Like four years ago, I got some scans back. Uh, I think it was like Kodak Gold or whatever, and they were horrible. They're so bad, I'll show them right now. They're super magenta that I think they're still on my Instagram. And that's what turned me away from color. So I shot black and white for the next three years uh, exclusively. And I only recently got back into color. I actually have, these are for the next video. I got a roll of um, Ektar 100 and just a roll of HP5. And I'm actually gonna scan those myself. Anyways, so my buddy Nate, he has developing equipment at home and he was kind enough to invite me over and he developed uh, three rolls of film. So two black and white and one roll of portrait 400. When I went over there, I wasn't really sure what I expected uh, because from the videos that I've watched, I kind of, I had the knowledge about how it was going to go down, what you do, how to mix the chemicals, how much time it takes for agitation and all that jazz. And even after watching a lot of videos, I was still really intimidated about doing it myself. So I was really glad that Nate opened up his uh, sort of like a sketchy lab. <laughs> but the way that he did it showed me that you don't actually have to be extremely precise. And that took a lot of pressure off. When you mix the chemicals, yeah, sure, you got to be precise. But when you're doing the agitation, like if you go a few seconds over or you're a few seconds under, that's how it was. And the film still turned out great. The, the portrait looked great. The black and white looked great. There are no light leaks anywhere. It really took the pressure off of being able to do it myself. So I'm actually probably going to start with black and white at home. And that is probably the easiest one. I think he developed my role, both my roles. It was like less than 10 minutes. It was super easy. After we pulled the black and white, just like seeing it come off the reel and you can see the exposures that you took, it's just, it's something else. Just seeing that, I was like, man, I'm, I'm excited to do this myself. The color film is a little different, takes a little more work, it's a three step process. But what I was worried about is how to, you have to heat all the chemicals to a specific temperature, 102 degrees. And that was something I was worried about was keeping it around that temp. And Nate showed me that, yeah, you need to be precise, but it's not anything to sweat about, you know? He literally heated up all the chemicals in his basement shower, thanks to these Patterson tanks and easy access to these chemicals. It's super easy to do. And depending on how many rolls of film you shoot, you can save money by developing your own film. Once we finished 
with the color, we hung that up um, along with a roll of his color film. And, and then that night, he scanned all of those photos and sent them over to me. And they were gorgeous. They were so good and not just like, I'm not talking about like my composition because about half the photos I didn't really like, but the scans turned out beautifully. He has his own at home scan system. And that's when I realized that a lot of how film turns out is not, you know, it's the film itself and it's the way you shoot it in your camera. But a huge part of it is how it scans. So once I get my scanning setup up and running, I'm gonna rescan some old photos and show you all the difference between what the lab scan gave me with my color photos and what my mirrorless scanning setup gets me. And that's gonna be coming in another video along with these two rolls of film. I don't know, I'm really excited. Anyways, y'all, I have some ideas in the works. I try to do a video once a month, so keep an eye out. I hope y'all enjoyed watching my video as much as I enjoyed making it and I will see y'all next time.